Hi there, Coach Paige here with Premier Fitness Systems, and this is my client Dallas. This is part two in a three-part series on how to bridge the gap from a bilateral hip hinge position into a single leg hip hinge position. Oftentimes when I see clients or athletes trying to attempt this single leg position, there can be some breakdown. One of the biggest things typically is some lack of stability through the hips this back leg will start to externally rotate and face away. Um, sometimes the implement or the weight that they're using is going to pull them into some flexion, so they're going to have a nice or a big rounding in the upper back. So again, we want to avoid that. We want to stay in extension. So last week we talked about the staggered stance position as being like a level one as a way to kind of work into a single leg stance. So let's show that really quickly for a second here. What I'm gonna have Dallas do actually today is he's gonna put his foot right on top of this rubber band. And I've got it right underneath the ball of the foot kind of lining up with his pinky toe. Um, what this is gonna do is serve some feedback starting with the ground first and foremost, okay? So I'm not, I don't wanna be able to pull the mini band out from underneath him, so he's reminded to push down through the floor and produce force back up the kinetic chain. Okay, so what he's gonna do is take that staggered stance position, his right foot, his toes are right in line or right behind the heel of the other foot. And then this one is up on the heel. So what he's doing is he's trying to put at least 80% of his weight into his left leg currently. And then for this, we're just gonna show you body weight. He's gonna keep his arms at his side. He's gonna to start to hinge forward. He's gonna adopt a softness in the knee, so no locking out. And then he's got his torso nice and long here, so no rounding in the upper back, keeping the chin tucked. And then as he comes out, he's gonna push through the floor, push through that rubber band, squeeze the glutes, and then come back into that um, standing position. So that's the staggered stance. So once you get good at this, um, we're gonna, work our way into a slightly wider um, or create more distance between the two feet. So for this one, now Dallas is gonna kick back that left foot a little bit farther now, probably a little bit more like two to three feet in between. Again, he's gonna keep pressure into the ball of the foot right underneath that big first metatarsal pinky and then outside into the heel. So he's creating a little bit of an arch into his foot. Again, he's gonna hinge forward, keeping the upper back nice and neutral and long and then push through the floor, go ahead and stand all the way up. So you can bring his two feet together or you can keep it back there. So let's show him from the side, Dallas. So again, let's take a look at this position from the side. We're, in, we're just using that band to create some feedback. He's gonna kick that leg back here a little bit farther deep. Yep, there you go. And then again, he's getting, so a slight angle in the femur, but the vert vertical shin bone here and then again, he's gonna push through the floor, just keep your foot right where it is and stay in this position. So he's still doing a great job of being strong on that left side, okay? So if I wanted to progress this, now let's go from bilateral to step. Yep. So you can either keep the foot there, but once you master that position, now you can step back into it. Again, he's got 80% of his weight here and then kick forward, step back, both feet together, still focusing on squeezing the glutes, okay? Let's say we wanted to create a little bit more feedback. Now we'll go ahead and add in the slider. So we're gonna use the turf for that. There you go, so it's gonna try to stay connected through the floor. Good. And he's gonna stay nice and strong through his torso, okay? So abs in nice and tight, navel in. Push through the floor, stand up nice and tall, slide back together. So now he might even get a little bit more reaction from his adductors as well too for that squeezing in. And here's now, if he's getting good at this, now we'll start to load it. So again, we're gonna use the ultimate sandbag. We're gonna hold it by the parallel grips here. He's gonna slightly pull apart to activate the upper back here. And he's also gonna slightly rotate the eye of the elbow forward so that he can pull the shoulder blade back onto his back. Go ahead and begin, Dallas. Oh, there you go, good. So he's being good about taking his time and we'll go ahead and push through the floor, standing up nice and tall. Fantastic, man, do a couple more reps. Slide it back and then push it forward. One more time, slide it back, push it forward. Okay, let's look at that from the side again as well too. Don't, you don't have to use that. So what we'll do is now you can at least see how Dallas is doing his best. And he's got, he's got a little restriction, he's a little bit tight in his leg, in the back of his hamstrings. But again, he's not letting the bag go much further than the knee, and he's still creating tension through his arms, okay? He's squeezing very firmly. I see a lot of people start to lose their grip. 
And that's going to have an effect on how strong you can be in your upper back. Notice how he's not sliding back super far, but now he's obviously more distance between his two feet, so now his left leg's having to work quite a bit more. Great job. Again, stay tuned. Next week, we're going to show you how to really get into that single leg hinge altogether, how to get really perfect at that movement. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.